Hello and welcome to Webion Academy and to this live stream. Today uh, we have uh, a wonderful guest from Germany, uh, Boris Kozak, who is a composer and pianist. And uh, I'm going to read this uh, uh, that I took from uh, Boris' website, which is like the sentence that is introducing him uh, on his website. So um, he says, as a child, I wanted to create something that would make the world better and more beautiful. I believed that composing music could be my contribution. Later, I felt that this beauty does not have to be created because it already exists deep within us and only needs to be made visible or audible to others. And I became a composer. So Boris, uh, welcome uh, to Webcam Academy and thank you so much for being uh, um, with us here in this afternoon in New York, but uh, you are in Germany, so it is uh, late in the evening over there. Um, so uh, talk uh, to us a little bit about uh, yourself, you know, how that all started. So. Hi, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here and to share my thoughts uh, about music because music is actually my life it's the content of my life and uh, yes here it's uh, how it started uh, at some age uh, as far as I remember it was like 14 uh, for some reason I suddenly realized that the life is not just uh, living your everyday life but there are much more things uh, that uh, mean something deeper yes and in that moment uh, I started to search uh, what it is Yes, and after some time, I discovered that there are two things for me that are kind of the greatest in the world, uh, and it was mathematics and music. And I had to decide what I'm going to do in my life. I, at that moment, I was 15, <laughs> and I decided to do music because uh, music has something that mathematics doesn't have. It is uh, a capability to touch. <laughs> such a such a such a thing that I I heard from many uh, musicians so that they have an interest in science in math or physics or those kind of uh, subjects and then uh, they decide for yeah. music and it was uh, my my thought as well I, w I wanted to be a genetic engineer at one point and then mm -hmm. it, then <laughs> it ended up being music right yes yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's because uh, mathematics for me, it's not just numbers. Yeah, Actually, it's uh, totally not about numbers. It's more about shapes. Yes, yeah. uh, like geometry, it's about shapes and transforming them. And in music, it's also about some kind of shapes or in German, you say gestalt. Yes, and right. uh, about how you do something with them. Yes, yeah. it's like when in literature, you have uh, uh, heroes, yes, protagonists who do something, who interact, and uh, you tell a story about them. And it's right. exactly the same mm -hmm. thing in music, uh, just uh, maybe you don't have names for these uh, heroes. Yes, They are more yes. like melodies, motifs. Yeah? If you yes. think about uh, pictures, yeah, you also have motifs yes, on pictures. Right. Yeah. Somehow right. it is all the same, telling yes. a story. And yeah, for me, it's important to tell a story that can touch and that's uh, what is different between music and mathematics because mathematics right. can't really touch yeah some yeah, scientists you... can recognize the beauty maybe of a formula but uh, that formula is not capable to touch millions yeah right a nice melody it, can <laughs> it's a little bit difficult to tell a story with numbers but <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, you 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 were studying in the Ukraine, right? Uh, um, you were studying uh, piano first, uh, or how? Uh, no, not really. I studied uh, composition and uh, musicology in Ukraine in Kharkiv, okay. and uh, then then I moved to Germany and studied uh, in Cologne. I studied also uh, composition, musicology, electronic composition, and then English and French philology. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Some yeah. things, yes. Well, just, just, just a few things, uh, right? <laughs> yeah. Just a few things. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, uh, how, like, would you describe your way of composing? Uh, uh, how, how, how do you start? You, you know, when you do, you think about something and then you write it down, or do you write down and then you transform those things that you are thinking? How's your your composition process? Mm -hmm. um, 
Actually, you already uh, quoted uh, something in the beginning, yes? Yes. And uh, that could be, in a way, a motto of my work. I, I don't see myself as a creator. Uh, I'm more like somebody who discovers things, yes? Like an archeo uh, archaeologist. Uh, like a Michelangelo. Let, Michelangelo has a sonnet. Yes, in a way, Mich yes. You know yes. that Mich Michelangelo had a sonnet, it's a, it's a poem where, where he says that, um, so basically he's extrapolating the beauty from the that block of stones uh, and the, the beauty is already in the block of stones. It's not that's like it, that he's yes. creating anything. It's just like, you know, shaping that's it. That's it. That's it. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, there are two ways. You can shape something from the beginning, yes, start small and let it grow. Or you can take the big thing and then uh, cut off everything that uh, you don't need there. Yes? And in a way, it is um, my way. Yes? That's why I say I'm more like somebody who finds things. Yes, I look in myself and... I try to uh, realize what it is uh, about, yes, and what I want to express. Yeah? So uh, starting from, from the big thing, I try to, uh, to, to make this beauty visible, or in the case of music, audible. Yes? So in a way, it's like uh, the silence is maybe the whole, yes, and from the silence, you take you, away everything you, that doesn't belong there. You, you, uh, you probably know the works uh, of Salvatore Sherino, right? He works a lot with the silence and with the interpretation of the silence. So he says silence is, is not a known sound. It's part of the sounds that we have. The sound is also a silence, right, uh, at times. Yes. And then from the yes. silence, then we, we can create those beautiful sounds. Uh, uh, yes. Um, and that's yeah. why I don't start with a small melody and try to develop it. Uh, on the contrary, I first try to find what actually I want. Should it be a symphony or should it be a piece for a piano? Yes, And then I search the optimal way how to get there. Because uh, the less result, of course, it will be a melody, a combination of them and yes. uh, developing. But that's something... Uh, that you just uh, learn. Yeah? That's not the idea itself of the work. You know? right. And this idea, yeah. it, it has to come from somewhere. You know? mm -hmm. And uh, there, it's uh, where we come to this inner beauty. Yeah? Like in the yeah. beginning, you said there is a beauty in us that we just have to discover. Yes, you don't have to create it because there is already somebody who created everything yes. uh, that can be beautiful. And we just uh, make it audible. Yes, yeah. and that's also my, my way of working. Yes, from yeah. the... I, I remember listening to one of your pieces that you posted on Instagram, uh, and it was like, uh, I, I, I don't know if you remember that I asked you, do you have the score for this? Because I would love my students to play that. Uh, it was like, I think it were maybe a small kind of a sequence of, uh, you know, uh, notes, uh, you know, and then were those notes are coming uh, over and over again. And I was like, that's so beautiful and simple. And then it's beautiful. Then. You know, just like uh, it's implicit it's simplicity. It's super yes, beautiful. Yes, that yes. It's not, uh, um, we, we, sometimes we think that we, in order to make things beautiful, we have to make things complicated, right? Or come to... <laughs> have a complex structure or whatever but uh, really come for the beauty can be in anything that is uh, presented in a beautiful way right that makes mm -hmm, sense mm -hmm. um, and it is also about a story yes yes the story itself has to be beautiful yes and uh, for the listener to be able to recognize this beauty you have to talk the same language Yes. Yeah? Uh, yes. Comparing to, for example, uh, avant-garde music, yes, yes. Um, and take a literature, a case of literature. Let's compare it. When you write a novel, yeah, you have a possibility to create a new language, totally new language that nobody knows, and then write an, you know, a novel in this language that nobody understands. Yes. That would be a case with avant-garde music. You invent a totally new language. Maybe it's interesting in itself, but if somebody doesn't know this language. Yes. He, she won't understand the story. Yeah. Right? For me, uh, it has to be the same language. And yeah. when you can start a story, yeah, and uh, create an intrigue so that the listener wants to hear further, then you can deviate and deviate. make yes. some, yes, make some more complex things that <laughs> would uh, right. create yes. uh, some trouble, maybe uh, coming to the climax and. In the way, yes. then to the resolution, but there has to be a story that one can really follow. 
Yeah. Right. And there is a language that uh, actually everybody on this earth uh, can understand. And you know which yep. language it is? It's the language of movie music. Yes. Because yeah, uh, everybody on this world uh, watches movies. And yeah, and this connects, language is actually, the yeah. to certain scenes, right? To the exactly, exactly. And yes, yes. And it progression. grows from the romantical tradition, yeah, the late uh, 19th right. century. Yeah? yeah. So this kind of vocabulary yeah, of uh, yeah. music yeah. is something that everybody can understand and can follow. And when you uh, put some elements of this language together, then you can take a new, and create a new yeah. story. That's yeah, yeah, what yeah, I try to do. Yeah, that's a beautiful concept. I read the book uh, um, time ago, which was about uh, um, a theory, a theory of beauty. I, I don't remember exactly mm -hmm. the title of uh, the book uh, now, but uh, it was about what um, we feel it is beautiful in the in the, as human beings, right? And then beauty beauty is so much connected with the feeling of safety so if we if we recognize the structure so we know where we are going even though there are a mm -hmm. few new elements here and there that we For can sure, enjoy yeah. it should feel safe and that's a, mm -hmm. it has it, it, it has to be connected with this primordial feeling of safety and security that we were looking yes, for when yes. we and trust you know, yeah. And trust, right, right. So yes, I should yes. trust that I know, and I kind mm -hmm. of know the story, and I want to follow that. But I should know where yes. I am in order to feel yes. safe, right? If you're yes, in a, yes. because you have to take the listener on a journey, yes, and you can't do it if the listener doesn't trust you. Right. I, I don't know if you're a fan of Schoenberg's music. Um, I'm not, not a really a fan. Not, not really, really no, a fan. No, I understand no. it intellectually, but I mean, I, yeah, it's a different I, I, story. I, I, I like to analyze his music uh, because it is, you know, it is interesting from a music theory perspective. It is very interesting mm -hmm. to analyze how he put together those sounds and those things. But as a pianist, personally, I would never um, put myself to his music and to learn his music and to memorize it because I would, mm -hmm. I would have feel like I'm doing a favor to my listeners, right? Because I want mm -hmm. the listeners to go out from my concerts and say, oh, this was such a beautiful experience, right? Oh, I like so much that piece, right? Oh, I love that sound. So I want my listener to have that feeling mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm. a feeling of, eh, I don't know. Well, let's not like. forget that uh, Schoenberg uh, is an expressionist. Yeah, no, he, yeah. Did, yes. he didn't want to create something beautiful. He actually wanted to create something new. At yes, any cost, yes, yes. and yes. that was his yeah. purpose. And he created something new that, in my opinion, is not a continuation of uh, the classical tradition. Right. It's yes. it's a totally new way. For example, jazz music is much closer to classical tradition than yes. music yes. of Schoenberg and anyway uh, atonal music. But yes. we still have the line of uh, classical tradition, whatever uh, right. uh, Stravinsky, Prokofiev, Shostakovich, yeah, think, even composers right. like Messiaen, yeah. Right, yeah, I think uh, Russian genius. composers. Uh, <laughs> At the same time, Russian, Russian composers they were a little bit more aware, I think, about what an audience might want to listen than, for example, you know, the kind of uh, avant garde all that, that, you know, uh, Schoenberg, Sokas, and all those kind of composers. They were kind of a little bit taking a, a distance from, you know, uh, why do we make why do we make music? Right, we make music for mm -hmm. other people to listen to. Mm -hmm. Not just to, yeah, it's it's yeah, difficult to say right. Russian because it's not really uh, yeah, everything yeah, about right. Russian. Like Hachaturian, he is yeah. Armenian, yes, or Prokofiev yes. is Ukrainian because he's from right. Donetsk. So yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe it's not the right <laughs> term, <laughs> Russian music, but that's, yes. it's the same territory, let's say, like that, yes. uh, yeah, the same was, tradition. Well, was, yes, yes. Um, yeah. I, but we have also in Germany, for example, uh, Richard Strauss, yes, right. it's yes. actually a continuation of classical yeah. tradition. Yeah. Yes. In France, in Italy, yes, uh, there are composers who really worked in this direction, and now there is a great comeback. Finally, many composers realize that they have to really communicate with the right. listeners. I think, yeah. uh, for example, the new age music, like you know, we, uh, probably we we kind of uh, um, we chatted a little bit uh, on, on Instagram about you know that like, uh, you said uh, kind of uh, all my piano composition like, uh, a little bit like Iruma and Audi and those mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So I think uh, the new age music and uh, this type of, for example, piano compositions at least is closer to the modern audience or kind of to a. Uh, wider audience than mm -hmm. uh, you know the the kind of classical uh, 
type of composers uh, are trying to do. And I think it is important to uh, really kind of connect the two things and say, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> you know, we, we want people to listen to music, but then we have mm -hmm. also to write and produce music that people might enjoy, right? Because that's that's why we listen to music, you know, because we want to enjoy yeah. that kind yeah, of yeah. sounds. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Actually, now we have... Uh at least two uh, traditions in the classical music here. Yeah? One like avant-garde with atonal tradition. It's yes. kind of experimental music. Yes? yes. And it has its audience. It's not a big um, one, yeah. but it's, it, it exists. Yeah. At least yeah. here in Germany, you, you can find people yeah. who listen yeah. to this music, maybe several hundred people. And they have their own, own concert halls, also yeah. own ensembles who play just this kind of music and that's fine it's like right. with jazz i mean people who play jazz and they normally don't play classic yeah it's a right. different genre right yes? Yes. but we still yes. have also this kind of mainstream classical tradition and uh, it continues yeah and mm -hmm. new age it's somehow already one step in the direction of pop music it's yes. not 100 percent classical yeah it's somehow in between and yeah, but I know I my students. These two kinds, yeah. Right, but my 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 piano students are adults, but also kind of teenagers, uh, right? So mm -hmm. they come. I, I don't know. I had a student uh, the other day. I had assigned a piece by uh, by Beethoven, you know, the Sonatina mm -hmm. by Beethoven, and he came back with a piece which was much more difficult uh, for you know his level of knowledge, but uh, it was by a Japanese uh, uh, new age composer. It was like, I want to play this. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> okay, you can play this, but then you have also you know, to learn it. Um, so it, it, because it's closer to what they know, what, it, what is familiar to them, and now yes. mm -hmm. Sonatina might feel a little bit kind of distant from yes. their culture, yes. what they you know, hear every day and then... Uh, it's like always... speaking the same language, yes? yes. I mean, uh, Enaudi or Yeruma, they really use this language of uh, movie music. Yes? Yeah. It doesn't yeah. mean that these uh, pieces, they are 100% movie music. Like my yeah. music, it's not movie music. Yeah? It's not yeah. uh, really 100% suitable for, move, for a movie, but it uses the same language. And that's why people understand it and they want to hear it and they can connect some ideas, some feelings with it. Yeah? It's for them much easier than when they take... Uh, Whatever, Klavierstück of Stockhausen, where everything right. is totally abstract and nothing that they would recognize and they're just shocked for the moment. Yes. Some but people I who are intellectually interested in it, they will find out oh, what it is about and they yeah. can talk about it. But it's difficult to, to have this feeling of, oh, wow, it's something that makes me proud to be human. Yeah? Right. It's something yes. like, wow, it's <laughs> this wow effect. Uh, yes. And I remember it, I'm missing it. I remember the first time that I practiced a piece by Messiaen and I was like, wait a second, this sound, eh, this sound, you know, everything is dissonant sort of, right? But then at one point after a while, after you practice, right, and you go into that kind of language, you really, first of all, you recognize, oh, that's Messiaen, right, when, when you listen to that. And then you can also, uh, for example, in the case of Messiaen, he has, he, his own language. So you start recognizing that language, learning the language, and you know that uh, something all of a sudden sounds too consonant, that probably it's wrong, right? <laughs> You're playing the wrong <laughs> notes because it should sound everything, right? Um, so it's kind of, uh, but, but once you learn it, and once that language is codified, uh, it is much, much easier to really communicate and then mm -hmm. uh, to understand. Mm -hmm. Well, we speak the different languages. So I'm Italian, yeah, I lived in yeah. Germany, I moved to the States, mm -hmm. uh, and for you it is the same, right? We speak so many languages. Uh, and then we mm -hmm. know that in order for other people to understand us, they, we really need to adapt and to learn absolutely, that code absolutely. that they are using. Right. Yes, yes. It's exactly what I meant uh, by uh, creating a new language and then writing a story in this new language. Yeah? If somebody yeah. is ready to learn this language, yeah. then you know, this person can discover the beauty. Yeah? Yeah? Like, if I am ready to learn Korean, then I can find the beauty of Korean poetry. But if I don't yeah. know, it's just uh, on some surface for me. Oh, nice sound somehow, but... Well, what yeah, it is really about? <laughs> yeah, it's written in such a nice way that it looks like a painting, but I don't understand the thing. So, I mean, it, would, yeah, yeah. it wouldn't be a poetry then, right? It wouldn't be a poem. Yes, exactly, yeah, I totally exactly. agree with that. But I think, too, that um, we have certain 
codes in our mind, right? So we mm -hmm. our, our our brain functions with, you know, understanding uh, mm -hmm. a concept mm -hmm. and then building structures and connecting dots and then you know, understand so that we can understand the world. That's how our uh, how our brain really kind of works in anything we do. Right? Like we are learning a language, we do that. We are learning a math, we Absolutely. do that. We, well, in science, when we we make an experiment, mm -hmm. we try to follow certain steps so that, so that it's recognizable to us. But uh, um, it, it, for music, it is exactly the same. We we don't think about that, but it is basically we are reflecting in music the way that we think, and so that's why we are extrapolating from ourselves. You know, putting. Uh, our thoughts and sounds uh, at one point to, to tell a story or to communicate things. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see it also in the same way. And uh, in the classical music, we also have more layers compared yes. to in the wide sense uh, popular music. Uh, and these layers, they tell us uh, not only a story, but they tell us more about the world, about the vision of the world, of the whole world, yes? Of the whole, yes. maybe even the universe. Like when we listen a myth from a uh, Renaissance uh, time or from a Baroque time, yes? It tells right. us also how this person, this composer, saw the world, yes? Yeah. And music is um, giving us the code to yeah. his view of the world, or her view of the world, yes? yes. Yeah? So it's not just a, a kind of uh, feelings, uh, nothing more than feelings. Actually, mm -hmm. it's much more than feelings, yes? Feelings are, of course, the basis, yeah? Yes. <laughs> but it's not everything there is. And when we, for example, listen to music of Bach, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the modern view is more like it's just feelings, 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 wow, a great composer uh, expressing so many feelings. But he's actually right. telling us not only feelings, he's telling mm -hmm. us about his religion, about uh, his life, about uh, the beauty right. of this universe, yeah, many more things, yes. Right. And uh, right. yeah, his polyphony, actually, it was uh, one of big sources of my inspiration. When I studied, uh, I also studied polyphony. <laughs> yeah. It was a part uh, of the process. And uh, I wrote a lot of fugues. Yeah, I even earned my money for some time with <laughs> writing them for uh, other students because we studied also with musicologists <laughs> and they were not like really That's, composing. So, so don't, don't tell us who, who were those students. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it happens, yeah, because musicologists yeah. also had to write uh, polyphonic music and Right. Mostly they had difficulties with it. Yes, yeah. it, it is so. like a puzzle because, I mean, if you think about all the voices, they have to produce a certain harmonies and then be mm -hmm. coherent in the melody. And then, you know, then you have it, yes. subjects and contrast subjects and then they have all to kind of be together. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of very difficult, yeah. right? Yeah. And it has to be uh, somehow uh, thrilling, you know, not, not boring after 10 seconds. That's right? actually yes. the most difficult thing. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah. Do, do, do you use? Uh, I I have a, I had a guest, uh, um, Professor Girdigan. I don't know if you know him, I but uh, yeah, he um, has analyzed uh, um, music in the Gallant style and um, uh, and kind of categorized certain schemas and patterns, right? That composers mm -hmm. in the 18th century were using uh, to. You know, produce that beautiful music, which was always kind mm -hmm. of pleasant. Uh, then, you know, people would like that. You know, like they learned uh, what people would like, and then you know, put these patterns together mm -hmm. in order to mm -hmm. be uh, productive. Let's say that you know, because they had to write probably, you know, uh, one piece yeah. a day or one piece a week at least, right, in order to make money uh, let's say that because <laughs> that's uh, that's how musicians uh, made money in the past um so do you use uh, patterns and schemas in your compositions uh, i recognize them i don't uh, use them intentionally yes but yes. afterwards I, I see and recognize them and uh, what is interesting you mentioned now the 18th century yes uh, actually baroque time yeah okay later uh, classical time but uh, um what is about baroque time um i have the feeling that our modern times are very tightly collect, connected to the Baroque time. If yeah, I was just I would, saying. If I, if I were asked uh, which epoch is uh, the closest to our time, 
Yeah, mm -hmm. for me it's definitely baroque time. We have so much in common. Yeah, also this yeah. theatrical thing. This, uh, I mean, the world, uh, the word uh, baroque, baroque. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it yeah. it means uh, some uh, movement that is not um, not perfect. Yeah. Yes. So actually, it is about connecting or putting things together. Yeah, that yeah. are not really from the same <laughs> origin. Yes. In a way. Uh, um like heterogeneous yes and that's mm -hmm. what we do in our times as well yes so putting different things together yeah? right and creating something new out of them yeah we yeah. call it maybe postmodern in our times yeah the combining styles yeah. influences from uh, even different nations and uh, folk music of uh, mm -hmm. all uh, of corners of the world yeah? Uh, yeah so that's why i would call my music uh, integrational music Yes. Yeah. Maybe yeah, yeah. in a yeah, bigger probably... sense, postmodern, but integrational. Because for me, everything is a source. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it's kind of yeah. amalgam where I put uh, influences from all over the world together. Then, yeah. If you look at the wor work that Mozart was doing, Mozart started uh, actually with a kind of uh, learning in the gallant style, right? And then uh, because mm -hmm. uh, he traveled a lot, right, uh, um, in Europe, uh, then he acquired all those other influences and sources of uh, inspiration. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you, you can see in his compositions how the composition uh, style changed over time, adding, you know, all those other kind of elements so that he was kind of, you know, you, you mm -hmm, go to mm -hmm. France, you listen to that, you take lessons mm -hmm. with this person, you learn something new, and then you apply that new thing to your uh, music. And it's mm -hmm. probably also a, a, an unconscious Thing that we do, right? We don't. Uh, you know, for me, actually, it's it's even uh, earlier, uh, even before Mozart and Haydn. Yeah, because mm -hmm. Baroque was a, a little earlier. I no, 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 think yes, more about I mean, uh, Vivaldi, yeah, sure. for example. Yeah, yes, yeah. or Handel, who put really different things together. Yeah, with mm -hmm. some switches yeah. where you can clearly yes. see it's not a continual development of something of an idea yeah, of this kind yes. of symphonism, but it's more kind of uh, sweet. Yeah, right, the yes. different things are put together. Yeah, and this uh, genre of suite is also very important for me. Um, mm -hmm. I have written right. a lot of suites, even with, with very very short pieces. Some of them yes. are, for example, Amuse Bouche or Petit Four. Uh, they are mm -hmm. about uh, little tasty things that have titles yeah. with uh, uh, musical and uh, uh, culinary uh, meanings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, Allegro con Brie for example <laughs> you know <laughs> this, this, so the, the, there are like yeah i should uh, have used the, that I, a time ago i they asked me to have a concert which was associated with cheese and and i was i, I had no idea how to associate uh, music with cheese so i invented the, the uh so i connected the titles or the composers uh, to mm -hmm. you know the feeling that the cheese might give to you mm -hmm. if i would have had your piece i would have <laughs> so yeah. Play it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, Rossini had uh, uh, some yeah. piano pieces in the right, end of yeah. his life, and they yes. are uh, about food, yeah, actually. Yes, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. About food, yes. <laughs> and, and by the way, it's, again, it's a Baroque tradition, yeah, Tafel yeah. music or music de table, yeah, because at that time they didn't have CD players, they just uh, put some musicians uh, in every. Uh, little uh, restaurant and uh, yeah they played some famous yeah. opera areas or music specially written for it and we know yeah. that even Beethoven wrote this kind of music yeah, yeah there, there was a lot of I think in that period was also uh, house music right so it was very um, popular for kind of rich people would just like uh, invite musicians and uh, have those small uh, I don't know parties, dinners, and things mm -hmm. like that uh, with music, yeah. you know, which was like... Yes, yes. And uh, now we don't call it sweet, we call it uh, like album, yeah? yeah. <laughs> More popular word for it, but uh, generally the same, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's con concerning your age or neoclassical music, yes. yes. But it's yes. not the only kind of music that I write, of course, yeah? I write also operas and symphonies yeah, and uh, they yeah. totally different story. <laughs> That's my idea of things uh, that, that's beautiful so uh, if somebody would like to become you <laughs> so that like become a, like Boris Kozak and then uh, I want just to imitate him and then I kind of you know they take you as a um, source of for 
the inspiration to become, <laughs> you know, like him, and then say, I want to write music like him, or kind of, you know, in that style, or I just like his music, and I really kind of felt, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, uh, like for myself to be able to do that. What was, what do you think the path should be? Oh, I think uh, they should start with polyphony. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> learn it, and then uh, try to write in styles of different composers for some time. Yeah, yeah. to learn how uh, composers think, just imitating, yeah, analyzing and imitating. And after yeah. they imitate, they will find their own uh, way. Yeah, yes. and that's how they would also come closer to me. Because for me, it's very important to find my own style so that. Uh, uh, my listener recognizes, ah, it's Boris Kozak. Yeah, it's not uh, somebody else. Somebody it's else. exactly him. Yeah, from the first uh, notes. Yeah, and yeah. I'm often said that uh, people recognize uh, my style, and it's yeah. very important. Although, I mean, on the surface, you don't see anything crucial in you in this music, but it's mm -hmm. the story. Yes, and it's the way how it put together. So one thing is this, and then. Um, Actually, I'm a passionate dancer, you know. Uh, uh, you know, you know, my my son is kind of um, passionate about uh, Ukrainian dances. So when he when he heard that I was going to interview you, uh, he said, "Mom, you should ask this question for me. Like, uh, <laughs> does it dance too?" <laughs> and I was like, "Well, I don't know if it is related to kind of you know what we were talk about, but if there is a chance, uh, I will do it." Uh, so you do dance. Do do I dance, yeah, but I don't dance, dance folk dances. I don't dance salsa. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, Latin American dances for 20 years, probably. Uh, I go every week once or twice to dance. Yes. Salsa, wow. bachata, merengue, yes. And I also dance kizomba for and several I, I, years. I danced uh, Ukrainian folk dances when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Because I had <laughs> to buy in my dance <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. Uh, so I, I, I could do kind of uh, sort of this acrobatic dances, you know. That kind of <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, it's not nothing for me. <laughs> yeah. okay, and uh, anyway, I prefer to dance in a couple because it's a different energy. You know, it's, right. a, yeah. it's like telling a story also. Yeah, yeah? it is. It is Interacting, really yeah, uh, yeah it's actually, much more I fun. Think, right, and I always thought that uh, dancing uh, was so close to really music i mean when we play the piano we really basically dance with the fingers right that's how i explain to my students mm -hmm. you know you should imagine yeah. that you're dancing on your fingers because that's mm -hmm. kind of the movements that they produce music you know if you really move in the right way then your sound will also sound in the right way right it's on the piano so mm -hmm. and I yes yes like and that's why i mentioned dancing because yeah. when i compose i also feel the music with the body yeah. Not necessarily in the way that I want to dance uh, when playing this or that <laughs> song, yeah. But it has to, uh, well, to reverb somehow in my body, yes. There has yes. to be something in me that uh, wants to move. Mm. Yeah? And yeah. if I feel that it happens, then I uh, recognize I'm on the right way. So yes. when you asked uh, how to become <laughs> composer <laughs> become like Boris Kozak, it would also be a part of it. Yeah, to yeah. start feeling the music with the whole body. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's a very ex important aspect. Yes. Yes. I, I, yeah. and I really also, live in it. Yes. yes. <laughs> but I, I mean, I, I don't know if you know that, but uh, for example, if you go to Africa, right, in some villages, uh, um, I think in, I don't remember exactly in what part of Africa, but uh, they don't have a word, uh, they still don't have a word now for music, to describe music, mm -hmm. because music and dance are so connected that. Mm -hmm. If you say that word, that means dance, music, uh, ritual, everything together. So it's that mm -hmm. thing, and it's not. I mean, move, movement and music, they, they, are, they are kind of they have a strong connection because that's what, how it starts, right? Uh, how music started, you know, with the movements, with the sounds we produce, with the sounds we produce while moving our voice, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I think really kind of that music gives you that feeling that first of all something is alive right so you know life true, is yeah, live, right yeah, yeah. so because, i mean if you're dead you don't really produce sounds <laughs> uh, no, no i mean you know it's a, kind of, a little bit uh, uh you know uncommon for uh, uh so and i think it is so um connected to that thing if you i guess both uh, music and dance they come as uh, a part of stressing the language yeah? yes uh, they come from the rituals yes and mm -hmm. during the rituals 
people make connection to something that is invisible, yes, to yes. something transcendental, yes, and uh, through dancing and music, yeah, you can stress uh, certain points in that uh, in, in the speech. Yes, mm -hmm. you can create a new layer, so to say. Yeah, yes. uh, also this rhythm, yes, mm -hmm. makes the effect stronger. Yeah? Yes. that's why they're so connected. I mean, yes. not between itself, but because they come from the language. Yes. So for me, the language is actually the source of the music. Yes, yeah. I was yeah. uh, I was uh, in, in Israel a few years ago, and I met. Um, uh, uh, so it was out, right at, outside Jerusalem. I was walking, and I it was at hand. Uh, there was a bedouin uh, there, and I mm -hmm. asked if I could take a picture, right? Uh, because I found that I mean, it's a little bit outside Jerusalem. There was a tent, mm -hmm. uh, a dromedary out there, and it was beautiful. Uh, and I was like, uh, "May I take a picture?" And he didn't speak English, right? He didn't speak. I, I tried like Italian, German, French, you know, Spanish. <laughs> I speak all those, but I, you know, I don't know anything else. And he spoke uh, all other languages that I didn't speak. <laughs> and so, and so, but we still uh, managed to communicate and ha have a cup of tea in his tent. Two movements, right? To kind of, mm -hmm. do you want this? Yes, yeah, thank yeah. you, right? And then uh, you kind of uh, communicate in a nice way, without even without words, but through gestures and to you know, really kind of yeah, trying yeah. to understand the other person. So, uh, and I kind of think dancing is part of all that type of communication, nonverbal communication that we. Yes, um, and think yeah. about the lullabies, for example. Yes, they yes. are actually almost the same in the whole world. Yes, yeah? yes. The, the, the later, yeah, the, the uh, more grown up people become, the more creative they <laughs> become, yes. and then they create something new that is uh, really different, yeah. But when but based they think for the, the, the baby, right? Yeah. And they can also based on the kind of rhythm that would calm the baby, right? And it would very kind of simple, very soft, and just yes. uh, several tones, yes. And the melodies are very alike everywhere, yes. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. actually something that can touch. Uh, people all over the world. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's so, how it works. When you said that, that um, uh, you know, if they want to become composer, to start imitating uh, different styles, different composers, and different, uh, you know, and just try, try, kind of to um, to learn, to learn, to, to understand how, how it works. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for example, I. I I, I'm doing actually doing this experiment with my own students, even with the little ones. So you know. If they are practicing, I don't know, a chaniotude, right? With mm -hmm. just just a tonic and dominant uh, chords, just like simple mm -hmm. things. I tell them, okay, so now that you know, you know, this etude, now write your own. Just copy the left hand, copy mm -hmm. the harmonic structure, use the same amount of measures, invent the right hand, and then that that gives that that only gives to the students the idea about. You know, uh, okay, so this is a tonic chord, and mm. if I want to have a dissonant thing, I should, you know, uh, on C major, I should just start with a D and I have a very dissonant thing. And they say, <laughs> it doesn't sound like Cherny though. Like, and they start changing that and they start changing mm -hmm. around the notes and start, starting observing, right, in this chord. Uh, oh, okay, he used a G there, maybe I can use an E, and then, you know, change the <laughs> notes around. So they start thinking, even though they are six, they still kind of can acquire that kind of language. Then they have that kind of almost uh, uh, unconscious understanding of you know this sounds good right now. I, I don't know yeah. why. I don't know the yeah. rules of harmony. I don't know anything about tonic and dominant chords. But mm -hmm. I know that this sounds sound good together. At this yes, point. it's the easiest way. You know, you can uh, compare it like with uh, creating pictures or making photographies. Yeah? Yes. When you yes. take a, a photo, yeah, you have to choose. Okay, you, of course, uh, there is kind of creative photography where you can still put objects in a special oh, way, put light. And, but mostly when you make a photo, you just press. But you have to, to choose. Ah, like this? like uh -huh. yeah. And then you have maybe 200 uh, pictures and then you choose. Oh, this one is the, the best one. Yeah? Yes. Or this two. Yeah. And probably all the other to whom you will show the same photo. Yes. They will say, yes, these two or maybe five, they are the, the best. Yeah? Because yeah, it's easier, I, I have, to, it's yeah, easier have, to choose. We have this inner feeling how it should be. Yes. So, so they say that there's a feeling, I think, in, uh, in the beauty, right? There's always that feeling of 
balance things, you know, proportions, you know, there has mm -hmm, to be certain mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot really start with a long uh, theme and then have some short things in between and then just end the thing because uh, I would feel like, uh, wait a second, you, you asked, I, I said that to a student of mine, he composed something and then he wrote uh, mm -hmm. a, a kind of a, a long thing which sounded to me like a, he ask, he's asking a question to somebody, right? So, you know, that kind of feeling that the music is asking a question. And, and, and the, the piece uh, like stopped there. And I was like, like now I'm feeling unsatisfied because the, there's a question and there's no answer there. So I, I don't know what, how the story is going, uh, you know, to end because I, you started, but you didn't finish. Uh, yeah, and, like an unfinished uh, symphony. <laughs> <laughs> And I had yeah. another student who just started writing some notes, random notes, and I had asked her to write a melody. And uh, she said, uh, oh, that's a melody. I was like, well, oh, do you really like uh, what you wrote? And she said, no. But I said, well, that's not the purpose of writing a melody. You should really like it, you know, because if you don't like it, you know, for yourself, that, eh, you know, maybe other people might not like it too. Um, yeah. So it's very, very difficult to really kind of, uh, but I think, uh, and I kind of regret, and I'm kind of trying to make up that with my students. We have lost that uh, in music lessons, right? To the art of really composing and kind of, you know, write, write your own music, which they do if they, I mean, if somebody's in a rock band, right? Mm -hmm. uh, his uh, passion is about uh, popular music. They, they compose their own music, right? They do that. They write their I own would music. say improvising, yes. I yeah, mean, earlier yeah. it was uh, an important part of uh, learning. Yeah, improvising, yes. improvising, improvising. Yeah, even when you um, wanted to perform something, yes, uh, the instrument yeah. at that time they were tuned uh, uh, tuned before every concert. Yeah, and then you had to check how it sounds. No, make sound check. Yes, like preludium. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. how yeah. It, how it, uh, preludium uh, came to exist. You know, yes. yeah. Because of improvising, just playing something, yeah, in order to check if everything is all right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. And, 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 and now we a, don't have it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it was a strong connection. Uh, I mean, there is a strong connection between uh, how music was taught in the past and. Uh, uh, for example, jazz musicians, right? Uh, they, they basically do the same, right? When they improvise, you have this kind of patterns and things, and then somebody improvises on that. And the, the other, mm -hmm. the, the other, um, if they're playing together, the other people in the ensemble, they really know, you know, oh, okay, this person's playing and is following this kind of sequence. So it's, there's an improvisation, but there's also an agreement about, you know, what kind of progressions we are using, you know, what kind of course we're going to, to use and what kind of, you know, ending is going to have this thing. How am I going to transition from you to me, right? And then I come from mm -hmm, doing. Mm -hmm. So this disagreement, but at the same time, they're improvising. It's much closer to what they were doing before than, you know, what we teach to our students. We don't really teach that now, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Anymore. I mean, I wasn't taught that. I was taught to read music and to play, uh, you know, what mm -hmm. somebody else has written. That, that was it, right? And then I, and I kind of, I, I wish I would have uh, had the possibility to, um, you know, make up my own music at one point. Uh, yeah. You know, now uh, the technology is so available that everybody can uh, mix the music even in the mobile phone. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, when yeah, we see yeah. young people, they just uh, show <laughs> themselves, ah, do you know this song? Oh, and here, and here, and here, or even not a song, and mixes of the songs. And right. uh, the creative of them, uh, they still uh, try to improvise, but they don't improvise uh, music. They put different songs, different videos, and music together. Yes, so the creativity has uh, switched away. Yeah, yes. they do it yeah. on a somehow on a different level. Yeah, but yeah, still, yeah. there is always place for creativity, and yeah. uh, the modern creativity is always integrational. Yeah. yeah. Do you know this uh, this uh, young girl uh, Alma Deutscher? She's no longer kind of. Uh probably she's a teenager by now. Um, oh, I don't but, remember. I the yeah, name she, name. Uh, but, but probably I'm you can look it up yeah. later, but she was mm -hmm. taught to, to improvise and compose, you know, like, like basically mm -hmm. uh, like Mozart was taught, right, since mm -hmm. a kid. And now she's able to, I think it's, she composed an opera called Cinderella when she was, I don't know, mm -hmm. she was nine or 10 years old. So she's pretty famous. Um, but she was taught to do that, right? And I think that's mm -hmm. what to, 
we should kind of recover, right? To really teach our students to, or, you know, whoever is learning music, uh, not only to write music that you have written, I have written, or somebody else has written, but uh, music that, you know, they like and they might transform that in uh, their own way, right? Like we write a poem. Uh, the difficulty is to decide what actually we want to do in our society. I mean, do we want to teach yes. music? or to paint or to uh, write po poetry, yeah? because you yes. can't do everything. You just don't yes. have enough time for everything or cut right. uh, uh, videos or this or that. So somehow there must come something from uh, the children. Yes. And uh, yeah. if you recognize, oh, they are absolutely talented uh, in the musical way. Yeah. Then right. we can uh, try to help them. But if somebody wants to write poetry, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe music won't work. <laughs> uh, uh, Boris, yeah. do you come from a, a musical family, or uh, was it just it's just you? Uh, my family wasn't musical, but my mother uh, can sing very well, and she wanted to study uh, singing, but somehow mm -hmm. uh, her parents, uh, uh, my grandparents, uh, they uh, talked her out of it, and she started <laughs> yeah. different things. She's engineer. <laughs> Yeah, oh, but she all, yeah, totally different thing. But uh, yeah. uh, even now she sings in a, a little choir. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, but not professionally. And when yeah. some age I decided to learn and even study music, uh, they both, my parents, they wanted to support me with everything they can. Yes. That's so beautiful. at the age of 15, I did. Yes. I already moved. Uh, uh, your parents are still in the Ukraine or? Uh, my father has died and my mother is in Ukraine. Yes, actually, she's on the occupied territory is, right is now. She's okay? Yeah. Yes. She's okay right now, yes. Yeah, but yeah. you don't know what will happen. That's right. yes. the sad yeah. part of the story. Yeah. But for the right. moment, she's okay. Yeah, yeah. I had, I had a, a good friend a long time ago. I met him in a competition, Ostap, Ostap Shutka. I don't know if you know mm -hmm. him as a violinist. No, I don't so, um, and uh, the first thing uh, that I did when I heard about the war was like text, you know, I, I mailed him, I, you know, I looked it up and I kind of, uh, is everybody safe? <laughs> um, it's a kind of, uh, I, I think, I mean, it's such a horrible thing. Uh, and, um, and things about war is that we don't recognize that the beauty of being human is being, is that we are different, right? And that we are all different. We have all our different cultures, and we still can communicate in a peaceful way while accepting the differences, right? And uh, I didn't really, you know, see this is mine, this is yours, this is my territory, this is your territory, this is yes. our territory, this is our world, right? And um, yeah, anyway. So um, you were telling me that you edit your beautiful videos and you are kind of produce all that, right? Yes, I do. I do. Yes, uh, I also do videos professionally. Uh -huh. uh, for example, yeah. in a month, I go to Cologne to record uh, a win uh, string quintet. Yes, they mm -hmm. also perform my music, and uh, we'll make several uh, video clips. Yes, yeah. uh, I can do it. Yeah, they're be they're always beautiful. I always fascinated. I, I I'm always fascinated from your videos, the the ones that you post on, <laughs> thank uh, you, thank uh, on Instagram, because I always was kind of you know really kind of well made. You know, it's kind of. Uh, I mean, it's not all footage is made by myself, yeah. But <laughs> I do cut it uh, myself always, yeah. And a yes. lot of things I do, I do uh, uh, produce them myself as well, yes. Or yeah. recordings, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I also studied yeah, yeah. electronical composition, yes. So uh, at some moment I yes. realized that uh, the software is uh, <laughs> working in the same way. That's why actually yes. I also. Uh, um, produced a lot of songs, yeah? not only classical yeah. music. I also wrote uh, music for uh, radio uh, plays, and uh, yeah, I have some probably eighty songs. I mean, in wow. different styles, like hip hop, yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything. Even in, I have a CD in uh, Turkey with uh, Turkish music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <it's laughs> What's the beautiful hall you are in right now? Uh, it's Mozart Hall. It's in Hamburg. Yeah, it's a very nice hall. Yeah. yeah, it's called Mozart Hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was told, yeah. uh, uh, like when I saw that, the, the you know when you appeared, I was like, oh, wow, that's a beautiful house. <laughs> yes, <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah, I make in recordings here. That's why I'm really in this hall yes. right now. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and then you also, I read that you also perform in a duo with a pianist, right? 
exactly, yes. With Alina Cabanua, uh, an excellent mm -hmm. pianist, also from Hamburg. Yes, yes. and uh, we perform my music. So we yeah. <laughs> only perform my music when we play together. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally no. fine. Your music is totally fine. Yeah. I think there are yes. enough uh, good pianists who can uh, perform also Brahms or Schubert. Yeah? But uh, yes. nowadays you have to propose something special, something that yes. nobody does. Yes, and yes. that's what we do. Yeah, Because yes. I, I actually think it doesn't make much sense when we play the same Schubert for hands. Yeah, no, I mean, it might be, but uh, uh, there's always uh, um, something special that you give to the audience when they know that uh, that beautiful music that you are playing is actually yours, right? So, I don't know, I, I, I kind of write small pieces, not not at your level, you know, nothing at your level. It's just like I, I'm still learning and I'm still following the path of uh, kind of uh, looking at somebody else and then kind of really kind of, you know, write my own voice uh, according to a pattern or schema that somebody else has invented but uh, whenever i kind of uh, um i'm performing and i play my own music you know somebody it's so beautiful because somebody would come to you afterwards and say oh there was you played that beautiful piece what was that and it was like i wrote it and they uh, really you wrote it yeah, yeah, yes, I wrote it. You know, they're almost like this, that surprise because they might imagine, you know, it's a kind of a Chopin piece or somebody else's piece. It's kind of some strange composer's piece, but they would never imagine it's mine. And it's kind of a beautiful, it's a beautiful feeling for me, but I think it's also a beautiful feeling for whoever is listening, you know, that when they come to you and then they say, yeah, right, yeah. it's kind of that's the most of your wonderful piece. And mm -hmm. it's kind of, you know, I like that piece so much. And I think your music in particular is so connected to, you know what people really kind of totally understand now right they understand absolutely, their absolutely, kind of feelings yeah. and they kind of can follow that story right uh, um that uh, oh, well actually we, we are not asked uh, is it your music or not uh, because uh, during the concert i tell about it i tell about it i mean i play yeah. some pieces and they say and this yeah. music is about this and that and or there yeah. were some feelings that connected to it and and yeah. then it's absolutely clear where it comes from but right, you know, right, right. in a duo, I, I have noticed that it, it works totally different. When I play alone, yeah, it's mm -hmm. like a little bit more uh, soft and intimate, yeah? yeah, because one person is yeah, somehow more right. close. And when we play together, uh, it's also a boy and a girl, yeah, it's a different dynamics and, uh, well, it works differently. Yeah, yes. it's also more powerful because we have four hands. Yes, it's a different and, arrangement. And you have two different energies, right? Uh, that Absolutely. Are together, right? And that kind yes, of combining yes, it. Yes. I mean, you have to combine uh, thoughts, right? So you have to combine what the other mm -hmm. person is thinking with what you are thinking and then compromise on that while you're playing. Yeah, so, they seem yeah. to be the same pieces. Yeah, but <laughs> when uh, you play them four hands, it sounds totally different. Yeah. Yes, it's more yes. powerful, it's with more dynamics, uh, yeah, interesting. <laughs> what do you prefer? Do you prefer to compose for piano? Do you prefer to compose uh, don't know, for orchestras or, you know, what's your kind of favorite thing to compose? Uh, well, actually, my favorite is orchestra. No? But orchestra is also much more difficult to organize and right, put to together. Organize. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. because you have to and, actually find an orchestra who, you know, uh, also, yes, yes, yes. And the ideal thing is, of course, piano and orchestra. Yes. You know, in some way, yes. piano is for me kind of uh, like uh, black and white. Yeah, I mean, not yes. because of the color of the keys. <laughs> yes. of the keys yes. uh, yeah, but uh, <laughs> think like a uh, wood instrument. Yeah, they mm -hmm. are, they sound cold in a way. Yeah, they have less overtones and like this. And uh, string instruments, they're very warm. Yeah, you can hold. Uh, sound and you can right. develop it yes and it can vibrate it with piano it's more neutral right, right? Yes. in yeah, the beginning of course you can still uh, express a lot of uh, colors yeah but in a different way through change in dynamics through change in the tempi and uh, all these things yes, yes. Yeah. but uh, piano is more uh, uh, suited to express movement yeah for right me. yeah, yeah. I mean, if it is about you... some yeah, if you if want it is to... about something intimate, yeah, right. uh, you have to find a way around. Yeah, like yes. to make a piano melody sing. Uh, there was a piano teacher who said, "Yes, actually, you can do it when you have these waves of uh, piano uh, sound. Huh? When you uh, press a key, yeah, then you have yes. a wave, like whoa, 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 whoa. and right. you have to play in a way that one wave 
catches another wave. Yeah. yeah, and then you can still imitate kind of singing. Yeah, it sounds like, like for example, Chopin music. You have to play yeah. in a way that still it is like a line. Yeah. Right. Not like yeah, pom, pom, pom. Is, the, the, the connection in the piano is so, so much more really kind of uh, um, between the sounds. You have really have to connect the sounds so, so well that you know it's kind of they they are kind of almost overlapping. Yeah, take over, take overlapped. over, take over, take over. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, on a string instrument, you can obviously then uh, you know play a crescendo you on just, the same note, right? Yeah. So you just play the same note, and you can just uh, you change the bow, and then you still, still kind of uh, mm -hmm. have a different sound. But uh, on the piano, yes, yes. how do you do that? Yeah. You do that and with orchestra, you can continue endlessly anyway. Yeah. yeah? Because yes, you have yes. a lot of instruments, they can uh, take over. Yes. Yeah. So, Boris, what are your plans for the future? <laughs> My plans uh, are now to make more concerts because mm -hmm. the Corona time is more or less over. Here in Hamburg, uh, well, last Sunday, uh, every limits were finished. Yeah. So yeah. now we just have to wear masks in, uh, in the, the train, and that's all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. We can start with the concerts. Actually, we started already, and I want to play much more, like solo and in duo with Alina Cabanova, and uh, continue working with orchestras. I mean, yeah. now I had uh, five concerts with uh, Philharmonic orchestras here in Germany, and uh, yeah. well, it's a good start for this year. Yeah, I, think, I mean, uh, uh, all given in this that, direction. That, yes, given that the pandemic has uh, really pretty much stopped, right, all those kind of activities. It's uh, already good, you know, to start having something uh, right now. Yes, so. yes, because the last uh, two years it was difficult. We just had a couple of concerts. It's, uh, well, people also don't go to the concert or don't, didn't go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now yeah, they yeah. start slowly, slowly waking up. Yeah. Yes. Next I mean, month I also play in some of Coronavirus is concerts. not over yet, right? So we still have people around uh, that, uh, you know, might be sick, uh, you know, recovered. And let's hope that, you know, we will kind of uh, uh, be yeah. better soon. But um, so it, it looks good uh, anyway. Yeah, it looks yeah. like uh, we have managed it and uh, the life can uh, come back to how it was. Yeah. Maybe not I mean, exactly we... how it was. We learned a lot of things from it. Yeah. Yes, I mean, uh, many many musicians really found uh, still ways to make music despite the coronavirus, right? Uh, I don't know. You know, we made more recordings, more videos. Uh, we made mm -hmm. more online concerts, uh, more of those things, right? The live streams. Yes, and, yes. Uh, I also recorded uh, one album. That's all the colors of love that I'm presenting yeah, in the concerts yeah. and. Uh, I've uh, practically finished another album. It's called Movie Music, yeah, where every piece is uh, about something connected to movies. Yeah? Oh, that's some, beautiful. Uh, some feelings or some uh, specific kinds of movie music. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, can also so, be fun. Yeah. I posted uh, the link to your website and to you, your YouTube channel uh, in mm -hmm. the description below this video. And I thank you so much for being uh, here with uh, us today and uh, you know, for participating in this live stream. Uh, and I hope uh, to have you around soon and then maybe you know, we can talk a little bit more and play a little bit more of your music. But uh, if anybody's interested in Boris' music uh, and in his activities, uh, I have posted uh, uh, the link to his uh, YouTube channel below, uh, to his website, and I think you have the entire list of everything uh, you know that's going on uh, with you in there. And um, yeah, uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank uh, you, thank you so much indeed. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It was a great, great pleasure. And have a good evening in uh, Hamburg. Um, so, and auf Wiedersehen. Auf <laughs> Wiedersehen. <laughs> Have a good evening. Yes, thank bye. you. Bye. Bye-bye.